Welcome to the KDB Review podcast and this very special bonus episode where we're bringing you more from our friends at Syncly. In the last Syncly episode, we looked at the story behind the mergers of CompuSoft 2020 and then Virtual Worlds that make Syncly the portfolio of essential CAD and business management software products for the kitchen and bathroom retail industry here in the UK. So we've had the top level business strategic background and that set the scene very nicely. But this episode and the next one are basically a two parter looking right at the other end of the process, the working designer in the showroom. Just how essential are design packages like Winner for Kitchens and Virtual Worlds for Bathroom and business management packages like EQ in the day-to-day running of a showroom? It's easy to think of these things as technical bits of software, but the truth is that they are the tools of the trade. And when they're working at their best, they not only make the designer's job much easier, but also the customer journey much smoother. And when the journey is smooth, they're more likely to think you're marvellous and sign on the dotted line. So we're going to meet Hugo Castro from Wilson Bathrooms in Glasgow and Manish Hirani from Moiti Kitchens in London. And in part one here, we're looking at the first part of that journey, the initial consultation. And then in part two, in a few weeks' time, we'll look at the design journey and the final presentation itself. But first... If you want to find out more about Syncly, its full portfolio of products, which now stretches way beyond just the KVB sector, and how it puts the user and customer front and center, then go along to Syncly.com for all you need to know. That's Syncly, C-Y-N-C-L-Y dot com. I'll put that link in the episode description, where you will also find a link through to the first special Syncly show. Okay, as promised, down the line, we have our two designers, and they are at very opposite ends of the country. We have Hugo Castro from Wilson Bathrooms up in Glasgow. Hello, Hugo. Hello, Andrew. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. Thank you for joining us. And down here in London, we have Manish Hirani from Moiti Kitchens. Hello, Manish. How are you? Yeah, not bad. How are you, sir? Very, very well, thank you. Now, first things first, let's fill in the backgrounds. Hugo, tell us a little bit about your business. So Wilson Bathroom Company is a showroom based in Glasgow. We do luxury bathrooms. <laughs> and it's a very new business. It's a very new business. Uh, we, we are quite fresh in the market, but we have a really strong vision. Uh, I mean, I'm not new in the, in, in, in the market. I've been doing this here in UK for uh, almost 10 years now. So uh, I've, I've met Tony uh, and we shared a vision on, uh, on what we is our definition in terms of interior design and, and luxury uh, sector specializing and bathrooms and obviously i've decided to help this business to grow and and we're receiving a really good feedback and uh, it's, it's been great it's really really good which is fantastic over to you manish tell us all about you I've been in the industry since 2007, so 16 plus years, and I own an independent kitchen showroom in London called Moiti Kitchens. And I've had my own kitchen showroom since 2014. We're pretty much very similar to Hugo, middle to high end luxury goods. And I specialize in German uh, furniture and predominantly German appliances. That's great. Thank you. Now, let's lay out what technology you use, what packages you use every day when designing projects for customers. Hugo, let's start with you. What are the tools of your trade? So mainly two software. So one will be Virtual Worlds uh, that we'll use to obviously do all the CGI technology to help our clients to understand in 3D what is going to be their future room. And, uh, and obviously in terms of building quotation and all of that, we use a different package called AQ, which pretty much help us to synchronize Virtual Worlds with that new software, which uh, it's EQ, and, and help us just to build very uh, fast the uh, a quotation for the client. And what about you on the kitchen side, Manish? When you sit in front of your computer every day, what packages are you using? Um, so we use um, a software called CompuSoft Winner to produce all of our designs and quotations. And we also use it um, to place orders with Germany and these technical drawings from plans and elevations. And we use it to make um, service drawings to give to the customer's builders. Uh, we use it to make annotated drawings, to create black and white do- um, documents. And yeah, it's a, it's a very easy to use software. And I've got a huge offshore team who put all the designs onto paper for me, so to speak. What comes across straight away from both of you, even as you describe the basics there, is just how essential they clearly are to your day-to-day operations. By the sounds of it, you literally couldn't operate without them. I would say hugely, Andrew, hugely important. I mean, my company runs on CompuSoft Winner. I use it to make my drawings. And quite simply, what do I do for a living? I produce 
uh, drawings, uh, beautiful CGIs of uh, what a what potentially a client's room could look like, and then I would sell all these drawings for twenty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand pounds plus. They are of huge importance to my business, even for my post sales point of view. As I mentioned earlier, in order for us to make service drawings, annotated drawings, installation drawings, I mean, we use the software for everything, for quotations, pretty much everything, Andrew. What I want to do now is step through the different stages of the customer journey and see how you use your software of choice at each stage. So Hugo, let's start at the beginning. When a, when a customer first walks into your showroom and sits down in front of you, how do you get out of their heads what it is they want? What questions do you ask to draw out of them what their taste or preference might be? Well, sometimes not even the client knows roughly what they want. It's a mixture. Some clients will have a clear view, probably because they have made a a research. So they saw a couple of images online and said, oh, I like this type of environment. At least here in Wilson Bathroom Company, what we try to do is from day one to build a relationship with, uh, with our clients. So trying to understand who they are, how they live in space is probably one of the first questions that I do. Try to see who's in front of me and how they live on the space. So obviously I will pop some questions regarding usability, you know, what is important, what is their daily routine, you know, what time do they wake up, what they do at first hour. So we can kind of create a space that will suit actually their needs. So listen to what the client is saying, listen to their needs. It's our first call to start building a design that will suit those clients' needs. I'm guessing you're the same, Manish. How far into the conversation do you leave it before you start talking about products? Like Hugo says, it's about understanding them and their needs before you get near talking about a different worktop material or whatever. Hugo's got it spot on. Pretty much, uh, you want to build up a relationship with the customer and develop a trust. Every customer is different. Um, so certain customers know what they want and have done their homework with online images. It's well, it's of huge importance, especially in, in my sector, because the kitchen is um, the heart of the home. So in order for you to be able to get a design going, a, a kitchen is also a functional space. And therefore, you need to talk about the lifestyle, how they like to live, how they like to enter entertain in order to really help them create a a space that will that they'll enjoy for many years to come yeah that's great i've always loved the way independent retailers take that approach to talking to customers getting to know them that well and really giving them what they need as much as what they want and that's a big differential between you and big multiples i think so hugo when that picture starts emerging what comes next in the journey for you well, we'll first do obviously a, a site survey and me personally, again, it's a continuation of the first conversation. So by doing a site survey, I'll, I, I, I don't look to a bathroom as just one room in the, in the house, right? It's just part of a big puzzle. Same thing with the kitchens. A kitchen is just part of the house. So I try to, by having the, the continuation with a, with a, with a customer, I, I'm always looking to the rest of the house to see elements that make the personality of that specific client and by gathering all that information after the site survey that's when i jump to the cgi software in this case uh, virtual worlds and I start putting the puzzle together with pretty much all the information that i've gathered uh, so at that point i will have probably a, a clear view where to aim in terms of design color palettes materials combinations light it is very important for me i've studied a lot of lights probably a lot of designers don't work this, but um, it's a little bit like photography. If if you understand how to do and control light in photography, it's halfway to have a really good image. So since we are trying to sell a product using this type of software, and if you know how to control light, the way you create an environment and and and, and space awareness and how everything is going to be made in terms of textures, and so the the way the light is going to bounce in all these objects and, and materials it's it's obviously very important so at at that point i'm already going to have a clear view and it's pretty much putting the puzzle together obviously making the best layout possible to improve the room that's actually such a really interesting way of describing it there i think putting the pieces of the puzzle together as you have to have the tools at your disposal to be able to do that and bring all those things together in one place Exactly. At least in this case, I I know CompuSoft too. They have uh, some similarities. It's pretty much a drag and drop tool. So it's easy to drop objects into space and 
you know, you can easily rotate them and you can start, you know, making a combination of what you're trying to achieve. And you, it's, it's very easy to see how fluid it's going to be the space or if it's going to be far too much. Sometimes I have clients asking for a lot of stuff to be in a room. And sometimes by using the software, I realize that it's going to be very, very tight. And sometimes I have to call them again and say, look, I'm just on the CGI uh, at, at this point. And by trying to put all the elements that uh, we have discussed, sometimes doesn't really work, you know, so sometimes it's a step back to go forward again. So obviously the software will help us a lot in this, uh, in this process. And it's very much a tool manish, isn't it? It can't get in your way. I think that's what's so interesting about it. All that functionality has to be at your fingertips and be an extension of your creativity. Because even by this stage, I think you probably have an image in your head of what this project could be as well as the customer. Look, what I wanted to do is produce some really photorealistic results. Very much um, leading on to what Hugo was saying. Light, light is hugely important. And how you create that light is, um, especially in the kitchen area, is by getting very specific in terms of um, the details of the room. So if there is a skylight in a particular position, it's about incorporating all of these details so that the customer gets to see exactly what it will look like inside their home and it's very important so i ask what the color of the floor is going to be what the color of the units and the worktop because it's about creating a, um, a a concept for them so they can literally see it before they buy and and, and this tool and probably soft winner is um is massively important in helping us achieve that it's interesting actually is we can talk about how these packages can help you with technical drawings and ordering and all that kind of thing which is absolutely vital in the process of course but at this initial stage Hugo the customer hasn't committed to anything and you're still in sales mode for want of a better phrase and being able to produce an image that sells the dream is everything. Absolutely we used to say an image it's better than a thousand words so if you are creating a ultra realistic or as much as you can with the package of software that, that you're using, if you can create a very clear understanding of what you're trying to sell. And I used to say, I don't sell items, I sell a lifestyle. And so that's what I create with this packages of, of software. I create a lifestyle. The product, it's almost sometimes as a, a second thing to think about it. Because when people are looking to an image, they are anal analyzing the whole group, how everything works together, Le at least in this case of bathrooms, let's say. No one is looking to an image and says, oh, I like this room because that toilet makes all the difference. doesn't work that way. It's how everything is, is created. So the importance of using quite well this type of uh, softwares, it's actually to create that lifestyle where everybody is going to look to the image and say, oh, I really love the concept. So that's what we, and probably in the kitchen uh, environment, it's exactly the same thing. It's it's how everything is put together. It's the concept that it's created for that room, taking in consideration what the client really needs. And that's the end of part one. Thank you so much to Manish and Hugo for the story so far. In the second part, we'll pick up the journey with what happens after the client says yes and the ease of making changes, rendering in real time, 4D theatre, and how the usability and speed of the software can make the client feel that they're part of the design process. Don't forget that if you want to find out more about Syncly, then go along to Syncly.com for all you need to know. That's Syncly, C-Y-N-C-L-Y.com. That link is in the episode description where you will also find the link through to the first special Syncly show looking at the story behind the company. See you next time.